And we promised you we'll be having a legend right here on the show. And uh, he's a strong tackler uh, and a strong defender. And when he came in, he came in strong uh, as well. And I was afraid he was going to tackle me on the show. But I, I, I see that he's a gentleman. I've got Tajuddin Disu right here on the show. Good to have you with us, sir. Thanks for having me. Mm. It's, it's been a long time. I've seen pictures and more pictures of you. And I'm like, is this how you still look? But of course, seeing you now, you still look very young, <laughs> I, I, I must say. Thank you. Thank mm. you. Thanks. Now, um, let's talk about the word Democracy Day. What comes to your mind when you hear that word, Democracy Day? Well, thank you very much. And first of all, you know, thanks for having me. I yes, think sir. I'm glad I'm excited and I'm happy to be here. Thank you very much. Talking about Democracy Day and talking about, about uh, Chief F.K. Abiola, I think it's... Um, when I think about Abiola, when I see June 12th, I would say, well, would this June 12th symbolize um, what Abiola, Abiola stands for? Mm. And I will tell you this, the man paid the ultimate price for democracy to be alive in Nigeria today, I think he needs more respect. I think we need to immortalize him more than what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. he, has done, he has done so much for a lot of people. If I want to start going down the memory lane and tell you what Chief Abiola has done personally for me, I think mm -hmm. uh, you'll be amazed. Wow. Number one, leaving my former team, Leventis United, you know, to go to Abiola Babes, I think was the turning point in my life. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you this, I've always had the dream to get my education, you know, go forge ahead in life and then um, not knowing that, you know, playing football will lead me to all these places. And at the end of the day, you know, I think I'm very happy. I'm glad that uh, at the end of the day, I play for Chief MK Abiola. Let me start from the grassroots football. You know, when you talk about grassroots football today mm. and you don't mention Abiola's name, it's not, that story is not even complete. Mm. Uh, the reason say, for saying that is that I remember vividly when I was in primary school, from primary school to secondary school, I was in Baptist Academy then. I heard, you know, the news that, you know, Abiola Bibbs was about to be formed then. And um, this coach may so rest in peace, Coach um, Adewale Subai no more but you know came to lagos state to come watch the principal's cup and at that time principal's cup was so vibrant when you mm. talk about principal's cup it was vibrant it was you know the talk of the time that was the that was the backbone of nigerian football mm -hmm. when you talk about picking players to teams picking players to the national team it started from playing the grassroots and there are there, this man again tony ak He's no more. May he so rest in peace. Mm. Tony A.K., I think, you know, took the advantage due to, you know, by going to um, the Principal's Cup to pick players. That was, at that time, what makes a youth team in Nigeria. And then um, I, I was very fortunate at that time to get into youth fund team. The first time team will be, you will be picked together to go represent Nigeria was in Sweden. Excuse me, and I remember vividly we played after Principal's Cup. I was in Babisa Academy, so I was lucky, fortunate enough to be among the two that were picked from Babisa Academy. At the end of the day, I made I made the final list, okay. you know, to yeah to travel to to Sweden. And where Abiola comes in is that you know, after picking all the players, you know, they need to travel out, mm. and they are going there to represent Nigeria. And they're not looking for funds again to go there. Chief Abiola came to the rescue. Mm sponsor the team, you know, to Sweden. We went there, I won the Gotia Cup. Came back home again. After that, went to Brazil to go and win the Brazilian State Cup for Nigeria. And we were all in secondary school then playing football. Wow. So, and all these things were being sponsored by Abiola. And we go there and the team is Nigerian team. Mm. Then the following year again, you know, after Principal's Cup, I was among the selected players again. and. We went at this time. We went to Norway to go and play the Norwegian Cup, which we won again. From Norwegian Cup, we came, went to Denmark again. We won the Danish Cup. The last one, the last trophy we won at that time before getting to the Flying Eagles was the Brazilian State Cup. We went to Rio, Rio Janeiro to go and win that cup, and it was bam. Nigeria. So on getting to Nigeria, uh, they were preparing for the um, National Sport Festival then at that time, and then. Um, Luckily, you know, I was, you know, fortunate to be the captain of Lagos State team. 
we went to Bendel to go and play the to go and play the uh, national sports festival. At the end of the day, nine of us from Lagos we are selected by late Christopher Edumizi, oh. wonderful coach. You know that that was a man, another coach I will never forget, and I still hope that man is still alive today. When you're talking about discipline. He was so disciplined that no matter how good you think you are, mm -hmm. if you don't, if you are not disciplined, you are out of his team. Wow. He doesn't care. Yeah, a lot of things have changed now, but um, in those days we enjoyed playing the game, and the coaches too. They were doing the job the way the mm -hmm. job should be done. So at the end, at, at, at the end of that, um, um, at the end of that scenario too, what happened was that you know we went to uh, do at the end of the day we find ourselves. Some of us found found ourselves in the flying eagles camp in Ibadan. Idumizi was in charge, oh. and you cannot believe this. If MK or Abiola, who has nothing to do with it, instead of the NFF coming down, it's at times if Abiola will come to Ibadan and just say, he want to come and just have a look, talk to us at times. At the Liberty Stadium, I remember the first time Chief MK did that was we were at the Liberty Stadium training. And the coach Idumizi now said, ah, somebody, somebody want to, you know. <laughs> that was how. We all got in, talk, in contact with Chief MK Abiola again, and he spoke with us. You cannot believe that spirit alone motivated us a lot, and that gave us the strength, the energy to go ahead and for the first time qualified Nigeria for any FIFA tournament. Wow. Any FIFA. Nigeria has tried, 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 but I the three we were able to do it. Why? Because of the type of motivation we got from Chief MK Abiola. Wow. And we all now see this man as, you know, he gave us money, gave us kids. I think he just got back from UK then, he gave us wrist watches and everything, wow. give it to them, yes. And without, without no way, we went to Gabon and demolished, demolished them at their home ground. <laughs> wow. I remember that goal was scored by Samson Siasia. Mm. Long goal, we beat them there. Then in the return leg, we defeated them 2-0 at the National Stadium. After that, we moved ahead, ahead to go and play against Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe was a, another tough team. Chief Fabiola again came to our camp and just told the, the, the coach we tell you, somebody is coming, somebody. Yeah. So the type of motivation the man gave us that time helped Nigeria to qualify for the first FIFA tournament. organized tournament. And that was our set. Yeah. And then um, at the end of the day, I ended up playing for MQ Abiola, yeah. you know, two years, a year later. Um, he made that decision that he want to contract that uh, one of our coaches, Coach Isiaka Yakubu, mm -hmm. no more. May he still rest in peace, peace. too. Amen. And then um, Coach Isiaka just came home. They came to the um, pick all of us and said, "Well, um, now we are we, we've 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 gone to Mexico to go and play there. We played, we did our best." in that tournament for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We came back, after coming back to, to, to Nigeria, after the tournament, we, we were told that, you know, we should be getting ready to play a Shagari's Cup, to, mm -hmm. to play the tournament, African youth in Nigeria there. So that was how we got the invitation that Abiola wanted to see nine of us. So I think it, his plan then was to get some of us into his team. Mm, okay. And then when the coach said that, I. I, I did not waste any time. I, you know, <laughs> I just made up my mind. No, five of us joined the Abiola base. Four did not. That was the beginning. That was the turning point. And then um, I will tell you this: at the end of the day, a, I was. Um, we played in four consecutive FA Cup finals. Wow. Four, 84, 85, 86, 87. We won the first one against them. Um, uh, no, we lost the first one against my former team, Leventis United. The second one, we won it against BCC Lions of Goko. Mm. The third one, again, we lost to the same, my former Leventis. team, Leventis United. Then we won against Ranchers. Mm. So four consecutive FA Cup finals, and winning two for the first time, we State to won that. And, and it, it, that, that was how everything started. Chief mm. Abiola now said, because I ought to have traveled, you know, prior to playing that uh, our semi-finals of the National Challenge Cup. But when Chief uh, Besu Bay was our team manager then noticed how I was playing in the training, you know. He noticed that, you know, I wasn't myself. This is not Taju, this I know. But what happened was that at that time, my mind was already made up. I want to travel to go and further my education. Wow. And then when that news now got to Chief Abiola, he said, go and bring him to Lagos, myself mm. and then they, and we went there and he told us, don't worry, stay. That scholarship 
I will give you guys. Just wow. play and we we'll play for a better. But just as God, fate wanted it, lucky as I was, you know, I, I waited behind. Though then they did not wait. He left. But I waited and got so good. We played that, that we played the tournament, we got to the finals. I was the one who played the last penalty kick that gave us that trophy. That wow. Time. So the chief did not even waste time. You know, the next day he called all of us, invited us to Ikeja Palace Hotel and announced my scholarship and sending me to America and to go and further my education. And at the same time, Coach, uh, Coach uh, Isiaka, uh, sorry, Coach Kadi Kana, David Adele, Zachary John, Alabao Yeleke, and a couple of uh, Isa and two other players making six, he sent them to Holland to go and do their coaching courses. Wow. Four, four of us to America. Mm -hmm. So that was how, you know, it is. I will tell you, you know, Jeff Avila is somebody that if that man is alive today, Nigerian football will not be the same again. Mm -hmm. True. You know, some football fans are of the opinion, uh, those who really knew Chief MQ Abiola back then, they have the opinion that if he was alive today, like you said, Nigerian football would have gone better. Yeah. But do you think that we would have actually possibly won the World Cup? No, uh, yeah, yeah. We, 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 there's nothing that is impossible. Football is no mathematics. Mm. With the type of encouragement you're getting from somebody, admi you see our administrators have a role to play. Mm -hmm. You want a team to do well, it starts from the administrators. Sure. I've played it, I've seen it, I've administered the game, I've done it, I've been all department of the game, and I will tell you this. Football administrators in Nigeria are the main problem of the of our problem. They are unfortunately we take the coaches for for scapegoat every time. You saw coach oh. whenever whenever team does, uh, didn't do well or you the players. The main people who are supposed to be question force see how they do. They are is the administrators. Oh. They are the ones who should supply the coaches what they will use for the players. Oh. The players need things to supply. There is no way you will go to the field with a player who has not eaten, who is starving, oh. who has problem at home. You think he will concentrate to play his football. And government, at times, you will see the government will, will supply the players what they need. But does it get to them? That oh. is the problem. Um, the name Abiola Babes, you know, when I hear babes, because yeah, as a young man, I know that babes is for ladies. Why was it called babes? Because we used to feel like the name babes was quite feminine. Well, I will tell you this, you know, um, Abiola Babes, perfect name. You know why Chief Abiola treats everybody? You know, when he formed that team and said Abiola Babes, he knew right from one, I'm going to take these guys as my own baby. So he felt like kid. it was Abiola Babies? Yes, okay. Abiola Babies, we are his baby. So that is Chief Abiola for all. We want to, you know, do the right thing to, you know, take care of, us, of his people, his workers, and so on. everybody. Once you come across Chief Abiola, your problem is solved. Mm. That is their man. So, and then I will tell you this, I think everybody that went through their man, when we went through Chief MQ Abiola, today we have a story to tell, and mm. it's just a good one. And for me, I think, I think I thank him so much because you know, giving me the opportunity to go sort of have, have my degree again in America, my family we, we relocated back in America, and then we're all still there till, till tomorrow. My wife and my kids they are still in the U.S. and I'm here. You know, I will do the, my best, especially for the use of Nigeria, to make sure because hey, tomorrow after football you got to fall back to something. Sure. You will not play football for the rest Forever. of your life. So they have to think that, they have to know that. Mm. That's why your degree is very important. Mm. Once you have that degree, you can fall back to that at any time. And it's not everybody that will go to school, we know that. It's not everybody that has that brain or knowledge to go. But even if you don't, I think I will, I will always advise the players now, based on what is happening and what has been happening, to invest, to use the money where whatever resources they have, and I think they have to, because most administrators that I see in Nigeria working, I think most of them are selfish, self-centered people who just want to and, uh, you know, line their own pocket and leave you guys to work, mm, and wow. that's not good. Very true, that's not good. I was going to ask you about uh, education and sport, but I'm glad that you've spoken about it and also educated the young ones out there. But we have Kunle Shulajaba back online with us, and I know I, I must hear from him today. Hello, Kunle. Yeah, good morning. Yes, good morning. It's good to have you live with us. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Uh, I have known, I knew Shifa Biola when I was working uh, uh, under him in, in National Concord as a group sports editor. And I knew that at age 18, he was not just 
a sports sponsor, but a participant too, because not many people will have known that at 18 he was an athletic champion, a school champion in Nigeria, and he was also a middleweight amateur boxing champion. So, and he was not just someone who just love uh, sports and uh, unlike most politicians and other, other businessmen. He was somebody that was so passionate. It's not just to give money, but he also attend the event. So that I knew of him. And at the same time, it was just because of his commitment to sports, especially boxing too, that the uh, International Amateur Boxing Association, AIBA, gave a, I mean, made him a member of his business commission. So that is to tell you how passionate Bachelor M.K. Abiola was. Now, let's talk about um, sports then and now. You talk about how it was picking players for the national team, going into grassroots competitions. Do you think that that's still the same process nowadays? Or Because most times you get to see foreign players come down to play for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Is that the way forward? Or should they go back to um, the drawing board and go back to the grassroots? Wow, beautiful question. You know, I'll tell you this. I think um, <laughs> there's no comparison. You mm -hmm. cannot compare, you know, football of those days and now. Mm -hmm. What happens then and now? So many things have changed. No question about that. And uh, the reason being, you know, they are, at that time when we were playing, most of the administrators, there are people there who really want to develop the game. Mm -hmm. They want to see how the game will develop. They want to put more and do it. But now, the difference is that, you know, most administrators we have now are interested in the money, mm -hmm. not the game, not to develop the game. Mm -hmm. So those are two different things. That will tell you why the game is diagnosing. And that will tell you the, the reason why we are not doing so well again compared to those days. At that time when we were playing, sir, we were playing for the love of the game. We were playing for the passion. We were playing for the interest we have in the game. And there, there, there wasn't anything like, you know, academy, somebody is teaching. We have raw talents at that time that, you know, want to go there and play. And the coaches we have at that time, majority of the coaches we have then are coaches who want to, you know, get results too. There's nothing like you want to tell a player to give you money. In the best, we wear jersey. Those are the type of... Uh, man managers and coaches we have those days to go there and pick the best and, and go and play. Not now that mm. you must have a godfather, you must have somebody who will throw you in there, you drop the best player, you, you, you put in somebody because he has a godfather there. Mm. This thing will not do well. True, <laughs> true, very true. Of course, we have Kunle Shulaja, but this time via phone call. Are you there with us, Kunle? Yeah, hello, good morning. Mm. All right, good morning once again. Now, I was saying that we have Tajuddin Disu, and I know this would have taken you down memory lane. How would you want to react? Uh, well, I, I, I listened to part of uh, Taju's uh, narration, and I'm very fascinated about it. Yeah, yeah, because he was a player with Abiola Babes. But I just want to add that more than most other Nigerians, Bashar or MK or Abiola's influence look very large on Nigeria and African sports scene. Oh. It was for a long time strongly associated with sports, both as participant and as sponsor. Oh. Uh, where not many people will, will know that between the ages of 18 and 19, they won the all Nigerian school athletic championship. And at the same time, he also won a middleweight amateur boxing title. So he sponsored various sports activities in Nigeria and other 14, I think 14 other African countries, which is Zambia, Cote d'Ivoire, Tunisia, Senegal, among others. Such was his unparalleled support for sports that no other African has been able to fill his position as Africa's first pillar of sports since 1980, when the African Sports Journalist Union asked you, we stood that on him. That was in 1980, 40 years ago. All right, so interesting right there. And of course, uh, looking at how the Super Eagles players are now and uh, what it used to be back then, um, he, he is of the opinion of going back to grassroots, going back to pick these players from the grassroots, from tertiary education. But lately, we have the likes of the, the international players coming down to feature for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Is this proper or, like he said, do you agree with him going back to the grassroots? 
Well, the fact that we now go offshore to get most of our players mm -hmm. is an indication that Ubo is dying in the country. Mm -hmm. Because in those days, I, the 70s and the early 80s, you probably just invite two or three players from abroad, the bulk of our national team to our home group. And that was when football was booming in the country. That was when there was purpose in sports administration. Mm -hmm. You see schools sports striving, and you see uh, schools providing uh, the bedrock of Nigerian football. Mm -hmm. But it's not so now. Or except we go back to our tertiary institutions and start getting their players, uh, I mean, the players from those places will probably just be wasting our time and energy, and then we'll now be importing players from our like we import virtually everything we need in this country today, including toilet paste. <laughs> wow. Wow. Thank you very much, Quinley, for sharing your thoughts this morning on the show. Okay, thanks very much. Mm -hmm. All right. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Now, Thank you. I I'm sure you totally agree with him. Yes. <laughs> no question about that. You know, we are on the same page. And mm. there's no, they, are, they have to go back to the grassroots, you mm. know. Those days, just as he said, if you bring any player from abroad, you know, like they brought John Tidoze, Tunji Fashanu, they, they were on the bench. They mm. couldn't even make the team. Wow. F John Fashanu could not make the team. When Odegba Me and the likes were playing, the mm. Green Eagles, they brought them here, Tunji, Tunji Banjo, they were on the bench. Mm. That will tell you how vi vibrant the, that the game was then and how passionate it was. So mm. things suddenly just that, but it starts from our administrators. Mm. If, you, if, if our football should return to, to how it is, I think our, our administrators need to change. And then, mm. um, uh, you see, one thing I so much did not like that is happening is that, you know, when you put a square peg in a round hole, it's not going to fit. Sure. And that's exactly what has been happening. We left for the U.S., went there after playing and blah, blah, we settled down there. But coming back and see how the game is diagnosing and it's being run, you know, it is, it is annoying. When you see people, you see players, these players, if, they are, if you don't give them their bonuses, bonuses, you don't know what it means. Players want to die playing because your bonuses are here, mm. at, at hand. I remember when I came home, like 10 years ago, and I was the manager of... A gateway football club. The governor then, uh, it was uh, Benga Daniel. Governor okay. Benga, they made, he made me the team manager of the team one season. All we, we, we did was that uh, we bought Igbino, their slot, and we just competed for a year. Mm. And we came first, not even second, because two teams would we, we, we go to Premier. But what, 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 what was the style then? What was part of the things that made this team? do well then. One season, what happened was that, you can't believe, I was given an hotel as the team manager, as the head of the technical crew or my yeah. management or whatever. I was the head because I was the team manager then. But I prefer sleeping with the players. I talk with them, I dine with them, go to them, know what their problems are. So when you know a, a player has a problem, quickly you will solve it for me because sure. you want to win. You want to win. And a, a, a player who has problems, somebody who has not eaten, is still owing salary or as a house rent mm. is will be kicked out the wife will be kicked then you want him to go and play mm. he cannot Difficult. because his mind will be divided True. so that is why most of the administrators they bring in now most of the people running game now running the game in nigeria now are people who has no clue no knowledge about the game all they want to do is make the money mm. now you, you spoke about um you wanting to stay closer to the, the players. players now will it be of the opinion would you support the nff for saying that the current Super Eagles coach should stay back in Nigeria, stay closer to the players, and also watch the Nigerian Professional Football League for him to pick the best of the Super Eagles team. Thank you very much. I think on that, on that, and I will tell you this, if you want me to start talking about the present crop of NFF who are there now, mm. it's another story, a different story entirely. Mm. But for that statement, yes, I think personally I believe, I believe so. I believe that the coach, should be close to the players, mm -hmm. know their problems, the management to talk to them, look them. And, and, and another thing is that you say, you, you ask the question and that, you know, do I want the coach to, you know, as well as I go and watch our, that is the best, go and watch the league. We have players. The, 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 the problem now is that, believe me, most people don't want to work, they want to make the money. Mm. You don't want to go to grassroots and fetch these guys out. That is where you, the players are. 
grassroots, you will find abundance of stars there. Then you take them out and go and work on them. Mm. But because they don't want to work, they don't want to do that, they just want a ready-made player. You go abroad and go and bring somebody who is, who is playing um, um, and any big money and he's been playing. You bring him, just go there and wait because you feel you just want to win. No, go to the grassroots. We have talent, mm. believe me. And another thing is that, what about our league? The league is no more vibrant. And the way things are going, you will know that our league is not good. If our league is good, you, won't, you will not say there will be no one or two players that will be making the national team. Mm. Or the, it's wrong. All those things are wrong. Very it true. is the system that needs to be corrected. And not until if that is done, the problem will still be there. Mm, definitely. Now, speaking about the Nigerian League, I know we do not have time on our side. But about the Nigerian Professional Football League now, back then, I've seen pictures. I, I saw pictures of Bendel Insurance, uh, Abiola Babes, when they play football. I take note of the crowd. We have thousands of people thronging the, national, the, the stadium to watch these players play for their darling football clubs. What changed? Because lately, when you go to the football pitches to watch a, a professional football league, you hardly see up to a thousand football fans watching the games. Thank you very much. You might be surprised I'm not. I'm mm -hmm. not because of the level of corruption that is there. They do, it. and I will tell you why. A lot of people lost interest in even going to the stadium to go and watch it, watch the game. Why? Number one, so many things. Just as I told you, I've managed a team in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I know what happened. I played the game. I know managing a team. I tell you. 90, 80% of the game that, wants to do, that needs to be played on the field, 80% will be played outside before going to the pitch. Mm. It is 20% they play there. It means it is not as good as, it doesn't matter if you put 10 Maradonas or 10 world-class players to go and play, you will win. No, because referee will decide who's going to win on the field. Mm. Those are the things that need to change. When referee decides who wins, because they play the politics outside the game mm. they've settled money has changed hands and you tell me this is the team that will win and they will go there and, and just bring on penalty that is not supposed to be a penalty <laughs> just manufacture penalty mm. at times they pay for penalty kick to be to be given wow. if you want to get that is how bad the league is mm. is and our league is not even getting better it's getting mm. worse they keep putting the wrong people there the wrong result will con we'll continue coming. Yes. Of course, we do not need the wrong people in, and, uh, uh, in, the, in the right position because with that, we're having wrong results. We just need the right person in the right position. Well, I saw an article where, um, an, an interview where you said you would not allow your son um, play for the Supergoods of Nigeria. Would you want to clear the air and explain further in like 20 seconds? Well, I said it and, and I mean it, you know. I, I, will tell you, I will tell you the reason I said I, I say that. I, I wouldn't want, you know, my kids to go through some of the things I went through playing for you and doing the, your best for your country, coming there, serving. You know, Nigeria is a beautiful country. It's a good place. But we have so many corrupt people. We have so many people that are making things. So I, the reason I said it, is, and I, may, I, I truly I said that, let them be where they be now. Because when you are in a system that pays your kids and take care of, you know, it's a good system that can make them, you know, better in the future. Mm. You leave them there regardless. Mm. I've done this, I keep helping kids. Why am I today still helping any youth that I know go to America, go and study, go to America and study? It's not that I don't like Nigeria, I don't like my country, no. But where are the people that saddle with up, uh, uh, responsibility to do certain things, they do mm. the wrong thing Very because true. of selfish interest. Mm. Wow. Interesting conversation, I must say, with the legend Tajuddin Disu. And I'll also say thank you very much for granting us this interview. Thanks a lot. It's and a pleasure. May God continue to bless you and keep you for us. Thank you. And of course, for the legend, uh, MQ Abiola, we say may his soul continue to rest in peace. As we, always, as we always say, we say the legend and, of course, his legacy continues to live on. I am Udoka and Joko. Hope you enjoyed the package. Continue to enjoy your day and please stay safe.